I go ahead and I put water in the resin for them. And uh, for shampoo, I'm using uh, oatmeal. And I do a pump of the shampoo and a pump of the conditioner. And I mix conditioner and shampoo because um, the conditioner really, really, really cuts down on the amount of suds. And uh, so the other reason why I mix the shampoo and conditioner is just because I like it. I like the way that it feels on the dog's coat. So I go ahead and I, I turn the water and the heat all the way up and uh, I get the water nice and warm um, because the tub, the steel on the tub is so cold that it'll cool the water down rapidly. And so, um, let's see, I'll just wait for this to fill up. And I parked, I was careful to park the bus on a lean. Um, so the whole bus is tilting this way um, so that the water stays uh, nice and nice and level with the not level but you want the water to go back towards this reservoir basically anyway okay so my goal in in my goal when I put a dog in the tub like this that's got a lot of hair that come out my goal is not just to bathe the dog my goal is to also flush the coat of all the hair. So I'm using both hands. Just because I have a bathing system doesn't mean I don't scrub the dog, right? So first, since I put the shampoo and the conditioner in the tub, I take the bathing beauty nozzle and I stick it under the water and I turn it on and I let that agitate the shampoo, get it mixed up really, very well. And then I turn it off and then I'll go ahead and start washing the dog with the nozzle on. It's short haired but it's got a medium coat density. So the hair is the hair is fairly thick. So I'll take the nozzle off at this point and I'll put it somewhere to the side. So now I'm just going straight hose. And I'll put that I really try to be redundant with my with my washing area. I'll go over the same place several times because the goal is you're already saving time in the long run, so I spend a little bit of extra time washing. Just because I can't. You're saving so much water and so much time. There's no reason not to just repeatedly go over an area. Using it without the nozzle on, yes, you do have a chance to get more splash action. You do have a chance to get more wet, but that's okay. If you know how to control it, then you'll do fine. So, at this point, and the whole time I'm keeping an eye on the water. Like if it, if it was if it was like you know muddy brown, then yeah, I drain it and I'd wash them again. But so. And of course, any thick areas like the knees or you know anywhere like that, I, I'm using my second, my left hand to really feel. I want to feel that water go through that hair. I want to, I want to know that I'm getting the water to the skin. Rinse off the conditioner on the side of the tub.
and I actually gently, I use my hand as a barrier, but I actually do, I push the ears out with the water. Um, I used to try to avoid getting water in their ears because, you know, all the vets like to blame ear infections on the dog groomers. But I, it, has, it has a lot less to do with water getting in the ears than it does with the dog's diet or uh, whatnot or what have you. So I flush the dog's ears out, get them nice and clean, and then I dry them out thoroughly with a cotton ball. So I put a cotton ball in the ears while I'm drying them. Uh, with the dryer and that does two things that it works as an earplug uh, so if the dryer is not so loud for them but then it also dries the ears of um, the water the moisture that I put in there and I've had real I've had very good success with this and I know there are several other people that do this I try to hit both the, the, the drain and the Bathing Beauty pump at the same time. So it turns off the Bathing Beauty, turns on the pump in one go. I get my water hose, turn the heat down so it doesn't scald the dog. And we're going to take a look at all the hair in the drain here. Right now I'm just, I'm using, I'm using the flat setting to rinse the suds. You just use a sweeping back and forth motion. Uh, I don't use any kind of uh, fabric softener or anything like that to get rid of suds. So keep in mind I'm taking longer because I'm doing this video. So I'm just going to pull out some of the hair on top of the plastic basin. So there's a, there's a fair good uh, amount of hair. And there'll be even more in the drain catch, and even more will come out as I rinse the dog. So now we're gonna rinse. All right, buddy. And I use a flat, squeaky like nozzle. Off. I will rinse, I'll put clean water in the ears to rinse out the soap residue that may have gotten in the ears. Not may, but did get in the ears because I flushed them. I'm going to turn the drain on, drain some of this water out, rinse the face. I basically just keep the water wherever my hand is because I use my hand to really feel to make sure that the soap is completely gone. The last thing you ever want to do is have residual residue left over in the dog's coat. And also, the more you work, the more you work the hair, the more hair is still coming out. There's more hair coming out of the water. The more hair you can get out now, the less you have to brush. Okay, so now I'm done.
on in the dryer. I'm going to dry them as much as possible in the tub. I forgot to put cotton balls in. So this dog's 70 to 80 percent dry, and at this point, I pass it onto the table. So take this off. In this case, I'll take the door, the Lexan off. Try to turn the dog around gently. Sorry, buddy. kind of long so it's harder to turn around.
until and I the glands just hit my hand so I use the same hand to hold the tail up so the dog doesn't sit and I use the other hand to grab the bathing beauty and I rinse off really quick and you want to be quick about it because you don't want the glands to get into the water and then the water recirculate because then you're just spraying anal gland water back on the dog. So there's honestly a little bit, this is a little bit more suds than I normally like to have, but to get rid of your suds very quickly, you want to use the, the, the flat blade and you just want to do this, just sweep back and forth, back and forth back and forth. You don't have to use fabric softener or anything like that. Um, doing this, uh, yeah, you're wasting a little bit of water, but um, this will drain fairly rapidly. Just to be clear, we've been here, we got here at 12. What time is it? 12.36. It's 12.36. One dog is done. 36 minutes to do that dog. Nails trimmed, ears cleaned, getting ready to go out the door. 36 minutes. Huh? And that's, that's with the video going on. So this next dog has the most undercoat for the length of the hair that I've ever seen in my life. And that'll be the real focus, the real time consumer. Now I'm going to put this dog on the table and go on to the next one and we'll pick up from there. Okay. I'm about to put the, the 
major shedder in the tub and I don't I'm pretty sure everyone does this but just in case they don't after you bathe one dog just give the tub a quick rinse down don't just try to be in a rush and move on immediately get all this extra hair out of the tub rinse it down the drain turn the drain on pick this up see all the hair that was underneath there rinse this off way every time you go to bathe the dog they start out with the same nice clean water basin there's no contaminants this back in here make sure your bathing beauty is sitting flat on it sometimes when you put this back in here it can sit like that up against the wall and then when you put this bathing beauty in here it tends to want to sit on this ledge and then it's not flat see I can stick my hand underneath there take your fingers and push this white ledge back and then that falls so now it's flat that's that's very important Again, I always like to take the Bathing Beauty nozzle and stick it underneath the water and mix that shampoo up. You want the whole water body to be like all curly. Mix it up very well. Okay, so now we're gonna go into some detail on flushing this coat. So I don't, I don't, I'm going to do my best to illustrate this, but I want you to see if you can see the, the hair melting out of this coat. I've only washed half of this dog. This side is wet, the other side is not. I want to show you how much hair I'm going to pull out of this drain. Right, 
I could feel the water pressure go down. All of this is hair. This, this is everything. The Bathing Beauty is a multi-tool. It is not a bathing system alone. It is, it is a de-shedding tool. It is a cleaning tool. It is wonderful. Look at all this hair. This weighs, this weighs a lot. This is quite a bit of hair. Yes, it's wet, so it weighs more, but look at this. This is wonderful. Throw this in the trash can, obviously. I go to collect any more hair that I can. And we just go back at it. I'll go over this dog again, two times. Get all of that hair out of there. I just went over this whole side of the dog again for a second time. Now I'm gonna pull out some more hair. So this is one half of this dog. We've gone over twice. This is more, look at this. Now I'm gonna spin the dog around and uh, we're gonna do the other side. As a matter of fact, this is a good point. This is a good time to bring up uh, a good strategy. This dog's got so much undercoat and uh, it, the hair's so thick, I'm gonna drain this water. Um, I'm gonna take the time to drain the water and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna wash it again with a second, a second batch of water. So I'm gonna do that now, I'm sorry. Okay, so I haven't washed this side of the dog yet. You saw how much hair I pulled out of the other side. I just drained the water and I'm going to I'm going to fill it up back up and I'm going to uh, have a second cycle so that the two giant wads of hair are still in the trash can. This is what I pulled out from underneath the plastic uh, tray. So now I'm going to create another bath water. You can see that I'm using very, very little shampoo. Hello. I'm using very, very little shampoo and um, I'm using a lot less water than I normally would be. And you can compare that with how much hair I've gotten out of the coat. You can see how much more efficient this is. You're using way less water, way less shampoo, way less conditioner, but you're getting way more done in the, in, in the same amount of resources. Okay, different camera angle. So now, I, remember, I've washed half of this dog. Now I'm going to wash the other half with a second batch of uh, bath water. Mix up the shampoo. using my hand to catch all the hair that comes out. I look at this as less, I look at this less as bathing a dog and more like I'm working the coat. I really, see how I'm undulating the, the bathing hose back and forth? You really want to get in there and work that coat loose. This dog used to take an hour uh, to dry. With no bathing system, I would try to do this with just the water pressure from the fresh water hose. And what's really great about the bathing system is that you can get more water pressure than you can get from a hose. So, just in that little bit of time, I can already feel the water pressure go down on the Bathing Beauty. So, 
the lower the water pressure gets, the more hair is built up underneath it. So let's stop. Let's stop. And let's clear out that hair and let's see how much hair we've gotten out. No surprise, it's another giant wad. So this is the first pass over this side. Look how much hair I've gotten. In the trash. So now I got my water pressure back, let's keep going. It's about two times stronger now. You want to keep that water pressure high, keep the hair out of the Bathing Beauty, so that you can keep getting more hair out. What time is it? 105. It's 105. We've been here one hour. We got here at 12. Now it's 105. We've done two dogs. And I'm recording a video setting up different camera angles. You see where I'm getting at this? Again, my water pressure, water pressure got low. So I stop, pick up the Bathing Beauty, scoop my hand underneath it, get all this hair out. There's another big clot of hair. All of this would end up in the air or on the floor or in your eyes or in your nose, in your lungs. But now it's in the trash can, not going anywhere. So we keep going. This whole time I've been, I've been doing this with no gloves. So once I feel like I've gotten a lot of hair out, then I'll get my nozzle, put this back on here. I'll take this time to clean the hair out. Okay? You might be thinking, oh, this is the paint. You have to keep stopping and pulling the hair out. Trust me, it's well worth it. Well, you're not wasting time, you're saving time. Yeah, more hair. Back in there. Now we can wash the rest of the dog with the nozzle. And then I can make yours and whatnot. And just keep in mind, I'm making these videos not because I'm trying to show off or say that my way of doing things is right. I'm making this video so that you can take full advantage of your investment. Every one of these handy bands comes with a bathing beauty. And it's up to you to, to take the most... Keep in mind, remember, the whole time I'm doing this, I'm getting in there and I'm scrubbing with this hand. You want to work that hair out any way you can. Any way you can.
And this is also why I say get that water as hot as possible at first because the stainless steel wicks away a lot of that heat. So now this water is kind of cool and you can see she's kind of trembling a little bit. So I'm going to try to hurry so that we can warm her up with the dryer. Okay. I think it's important to understand that when I say hot as possible, I mean not when you're spraying water on the dog. I mean when you're filling the Bathing Beauty Reservoir with water. You want that water to be warm because it's going to cool down quickly because it's in contact with a large surface area of steel. So just keep that in mind. Don't rinse the dog with hot water, obviously. Use warm water. So I can feel the water pressure's gone down yet again. So one final time, let's see how much hair we got in here. A little bit less than the other times, but that's still quite a lot. In the trash can again. Now we're going to start rinsing. We're going to pull out another one of those balls of hair too. You're not only saving time brushing the dog, you're not only saving time drying the dog, but you're saving time cleaning up this dog's hair. It used to take me an hour to clean up all the hair that would be everywhere. Notice I haven't started rinsing the dog yet. I'm cleaning this hair out of the drain first. Turn that back on there. Look, another ball of hair. You're bathing and de-shedding all in one. I know some of you probably already do this, but if you already are doing this, then don't watch the video. It's going to be long. Nobody's making you watch this. But if you're interested in how other people do things, then, you know, stick around. The reason why this is so revolutionary is because we just spent like 15 or 20 minutes washing this dog and we only used a few gallons of water because we were recirculating. You cannot do that without a bathing system. Cannot do it, cannot happen. pulled out of the drain if all of that hair was still in this coat it would be that much harder to get the water out of the coat this is why the dog dries so much faster when you wash it this way now we're going to rinse the other side
Yes, of course, you can remove a lot of hair with your fingers by scrubbing a dog, but you can't remove it as quickly and as efficiently as you can with the water pressure that the bathing system has. There's, there's way too many trade-offs, there's way too many improvements to not use a bathing system. The only situation that I would not use a bathing system for is if a dog was so feral or skittish that it, it could not tolerate the water pressure and the noise of being washed. And even then, you're still spraying it with water, so it's still going to act a fool anyway. But I've done a couple dogs that, that they don't like the bathing system, but most of the time after 30 seconds they get used to it. So there's not very many reasons to not use a bathing system. It's easier on your water pumps. It's easier on um, it's easier on the entire van. You don't use as much water. Rinse, rinse, rinse. Rinsing is just as important as the washing is too, because. Any type of any residual shampoo residue is going to make it that much harder to, to dry the dog. I'm going to start drying the dog, I'm probably going to speed up the footage so that, um, because there's going to be hair everywhere, I might have to clean off the camera. The other thing that's cool is this dog doesn't like to be brushed. She kind of raises her lips a little bit when you brush around her neck. Um, she doesn't bite, but she does not like to be brushed and pulled on. So she doesn't mind if the if the water pressure gets the water out. She's fine with that. So it makes it easier on the dogs. It's just easier on everyone. You can see I'm doing a squeezing action with this towel. Um, I don't really rub. So you can see right now it's 119. And so uh that's a that's a good time frame and we'll uh, show you the time when we're done. Oh, I almost forgot the cotton ball. Just push in gently. It'll almost click into place when it gets to the, the main ear cavity. All right, here we go.
All right, now we're gonna put her on the table. It was 119 when I showed you the time, and now it's 128. By the way, when I uh, when I said it used to take us an hour to drive this dog, it used to take us an hour to drive this dog with two people, two dryers, one person on each side of the dog, drying one half of the dog at a time. Just think about that. I'm using the the uh, the Hanby dryers with the van. You don't need anything more than this. Just just think about that for a second. This side's dry, I'm gonna rotate the dog.
I gotta stop the video for a second. I want you to see this. Okay. I made mention that if the dog's clean, the water coming off the dog will be clean. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's hair. You see this brown right here? That's hair. You see how the water's clear? That's how you know your dog is clean. If the water that comes off the dog is clear, what more do you need? It's, it's clean. There's no wet dog smell. Right. Let's keep going. Dog is dry. Dry dog. So, what else can I show you? I can show you that because we removed, because we removed all that hair in the bath, and because we blew out the rest of it, you realize how much time this saves with brushing. I'm taking a comb to this dog, and there's hardly any hair coming out. When I said it used to take us an hour to dry this dog, we used to still have to brush for another 30 minutes. We'll be able to brush this dog over in 10 minutes. Get all the this little stuff right here these little get that off of there but this dog is dry what time is it it's 143 it was 119 when we started drying this dog so <laughs> you can see how much more efficient this is this is uh this is a big deal we got here at 12 and it's almost two so two hours to do three dogs and one of them is a tremendous shedder and again I've just been brushing and I've just been combing this dog and yeah there's a little hair on the comb but compare that with the piles and piles of hair that we used to get off the dog before and so now she doesn't mind as much when we comb her neck out um, yeah and so now we just got to do her nails and Pull the cotton balls out of her ears, clean her ears, put a bandana on her, and she's good to Get go. yourself one of these rubber brooms, okay? And just sweep all this stuff up. This is a life saver. Cleaning, the dog's been finished and it's going out the door. Look at that. Say bye. Say bye. Get me out. Wonderful. Alrighty. And we just get nails and 
hair and everything. Let me get that into as much of a pile as we can. And then we turn the vacuum cleaner back on. And I just suck all of that up. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it I hope you learned something from it. And if not, um, then thanks for watching anyway. Um, and uh, have a good day. It just occurred to me that I, I showed the time, uh, like physically showed the time uh, at a couple of different points in that video, but I didn't show the time when we were finished. I, sh I said the time, but I didn't show. Well, we're at the next house. We have a Brittany here. And I'll show you the Mercedes clock. It says 225 right there. 15 minute travel time. Um, there it's 225 on the iPad. So just thought I'd throw that in there. I completely forgot to show the time when we were finished just in case anyone was doubtful or anything. But yeah, anyway.